All right. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna show you a bit of a secret weapon today, and it's how I use this camera lens. It's just a standard Nikon 300 millimeter lens, and I use this instead of a telescope. And there's a couple of reasons why I do that. The main one is I'm about 250 bucks in the hole for this lens. I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks that I use, as well as one main secret weapon that really makes a difference in turning this into an extremely capable refractor. We'll take some images tonight. I'll show you what it can do. Stay tuned. We are here near the small town of Arachula in southeast Queensland. We're away from all the cities. There's not much happening out here, especially at night. So no light pollution, no worries. We're gonna be having all. So the main thing you can do with a camera lens to typically make it a bit clearer or sharper is turn down the aperture. You can do that internally, use the iris, close it down that way. But when you're taking photos of stars and pinpoint bits of light, those little internal aperture blades tend to create diffraction and light spikes from these stars and it's not always the best look. So the solution that I've found for this is to use lens step down rings. What these do is it step by step closes down the front lens opening or it makes it a bit smaller. And what that does is it does the exact same thing as closing down the iris or the aperture yourself with the camera but without any of those weird star shapes. And I'll show you why this can make this old school lens really kick ass and stand up to a lot of modern high dollar refractors. So, show you how to do it, hey? So we'll put this to the front of the lens, screw it on. Looks a bit weird, so I then typically will close the front of the lens hood and it's like nothing's ever happened. You're at a star party and you pull this one out, no one will even know. We'll wait till it gets a bit darker and I'll show you the impact that this has on. I'll take it on, take it off, etc. and show you why this is an absolute secret weapon. All right, we're putting this lens to work tonight. It's sitting there on the Star Adventurer GTI, which is an equatorial tracking mount. It kind of follows the rotation of the sky or more so it compensates for the rotation of the earth. This allows us to take nice long exposure photos. That's part of the key. The other part of the key to make this lens work instead of a telescope is using these step down rings. So tonight what we're gonna do it's taking photos now and throughout the night I'm going to take on and off the step down rings and I'll show you the difference in photo quality. It's actually really interesting how much more detail you can get from a basic cheap lens like this just by stopping it down externally or using these rings. We'll um, hopefully let it ride on the back of this Star Adventurer for a couple of hours tonight. In the meantime, I wanna sit back and relax and take a little look outside our sphere and I'll be back with you behind the desk and we'll have a look at the image we get tonight. It should be pretty exciting. Okay, that night of imaging went really well. We had perfectly clear skies was relaxing, I didn't see another person, which is always nice when you're in the middle of nowhere. And I got in just in time because over the last week on the eastern coast of Australia, we've been hit by Cyclone Alfred. So it's given me plenty of time to put this video together. And now that the sun's back out, we are back in action. So I've loaded all of the images up on Cyril, which is a software that I use for stacking and post-production of all of my Astro images. We're gonna look at the difference between having the lens step down rings on and the lens step down rings off first. And I'll also show you, I've got a third image in here that is having the lens stopped down internally to the exact same aperture as my step down rings. So this lens is a 300 millimeter F4.0 lens and I've stepped it down to be the equivalent of a 300 millimeter F5.6 lens. So it is a stop darker and I've matched that with the internal iris. And I'll show you the difference that that makes. So. First things first, this is the image with step down rings. Now, spoiler alert, this will be the best image out of all of them and I'll show you why. So I was shooting the Brosette Nebula and this is just one single 60 second frame. So I took a hundred of these in total. Now zooming right in, you can see how fantastic the stars look. You can even see some of the nebula details here. 
This is interesting because you can compare this to how the final image looks and you'll get an idea of how the more photos you can take, the better your image will be. But anyway, so let's have a little scroll around. So this is the very center of the frame where it always looks the best anyway. And looking around, it generally looks fantastic. If you're into the game, you know that this is a wicked result from a lens of this pedigree. Let's keep it zoomed in here and let's compare it to the lens with no step down rings. So wide open at f4. And as you can see immediately, I'm gonna blink between the two. Look at the difference between the star sizes. They're bloated and they're soft at f4.0. It's just clear as day that the addition of those rings to the front of the lens clears the lens up. It makes the stars smaller and sharper and you can even see in the detail of the nebula that it's much clearer. This is only in the center of the frame. Moving to the sides, the corners of an image are always the most demanding because the lens has a more difficult time correcting the light. And as you can see here, with the set down rings on and off, it is an absolute night and day difference. The clarity and the quality of the stars, you want the stars to be as circular as possible and with the step down rings off the lens, you can see the stars are shaped with little wings and that's called coma. It's a form of optical aberration and it's not desirable, especially in images of stars and where we're trying to make this look as realistic and as true to life as possible. So to have perfect optical qualities is super desirable and you can do that just by putting step down rings on the lens. It's just a, it's a game changer, it's a no brainer. You gotta do it. Now to give the lens a fighting chance, let's compare the step down rings on with the lens internally stopped down to f5.6 because I know you guys are gonna ask for that and I'll show you why the step down rings, even though they're closing the aperture down externally to the same number, they're also closing it down to 5.6. I'll show you that having it step down externally is actually a better way to do it. So this is the lens with the step down rings on and this is the lens stopped down internally to 5.6. Now. In the center, you might notice that it's not a huge difference. It's a little bit better quality with the step down rings on, which is great. But let's move to the side and back up in the corner. Remember, this is where it's most demanding on the lens. It's harder to keep it sharp and clear in the corners of the frame. Now this is with the step down rings on and this is with the lens stopped internally to 5.6 to match the rings. And as you can see, I'll blink between the two, the step down rings are clearly better quality. And that's really all there is to it. So to wrap it all up, lens step down rings are an absolute no brainer and it's a total secret weapon to turn a normal camera lens like that into a capable astrograph. And if you're just getting into the game and you wanna be budget conscious, this is the way to go without a doubt buy a 300 millimeter lens, get some step down rings and have an absolute ball. I'm gonna put all this image together, do some production and show you what we captured because you can get stuff like this as well. This is an exciting one and more to come. See you in the next one.